What's going on, everybody? I'll be cloning a mushroom from a Ted Tam tub. But before we start, make sure you're doing this in a flow hood in front of an FFU, a fan filter unit, or in a still air box, and definitely not out in the open air. Make sure your hands are washed and sanitized. Put some clean gloves on and sanitize them with 70% ISO. Make sure whatever your workstation is, it's clean and sanitized. To start, you need to select a mushroom. You wanna make sure it's clean, there's no contamination on it, there's no slime or any other kind of mold or bacteria growing on it. You wanna try and get them before they open up all the way so they're not covered in spores. The earlier you clone them, the better. You just wanna make sure they're thick enough that you can rip it in half. You can surface sterilize the mushroom if you want, but the method I'm gonna show you if you have good technique, you won't need to surface sterilize the mushroom. When I harvest the mushroom, if there's any substrate still on the base of it, I'll usually cut it off with a clean pair of scissors. You could use a clean scalpel as well. You could also just rip it off. The only purpose of this is just to keep from getting substrate all over your workstation. You want to try and avoid getting substrate in the cloning tissue sample or in the agar dish as it's probably contaminated. For this procedure, I'll be using tweezers. You can get tweezers in most cosmetic sections and you can get them on Amazon for pretty cheap. I got a dozen of them for a little over $12. You just want to make sure that they're all metal and that you can flame sterilize them without them melting or being destroyed. I believe you can use ceramic ones as well. I've personally just never used them. To sterilize them with a butane lighter, you just heat the tips up until they turn a glowing red color. Once it's flame sterilized, you want to make sure it cools off enough that it won't kill the mycelium that you're trying to clone. You want to grab the mushroom at the bottom of the stipe with both hands and rip it in half long ways. At this point, you want to make sure you do not touch the inside of the mushroom that you've now exposed. All the fresh tissue from ripping the mushroom in half long ways should be sterile. You want the sample to be at least about the size of a piece of rice or bigger, but it doesn't necessarily have to be bigger. You just want to avoid taking samples that are too small or smaller than a piece of rice because they could dry out before they have a chance to go back vegetative and start growing on the agar. With the tweezers, you want to select clean tissue from the middle of the mushroom on the inside. You want to avoid touching the outside of the mushroom with the tweezers. And when you take the samples, you want to avoid touching any part of the outside with the sample. Both can contaminate the sample. You want to make sure when you get your sample that it is only clean tissue from inside. Be careful not to rip part of the outside of the sample. Your gloves should be sanitized, but once you touch the outside of the mushroom, they're going to be contaminated. So once you rip the mushroom in half, you want to avoid touching the inside with your fingers. Once you have the sample in the tweezers, you want to put it on the agar plate. We want to try and jam it into the agar or at least stick it to the agar so that it doesn't dry out. You're not necessarily trying to jam it underneath the agar, you're just trying to make sure that it's all in contact with the agar. Now all you have to do is wrap and label the plate and wait for the culture to grow out from the tissue sample. In most cases, the tissue sample will become fuzzy and eventually mycelium will start growing off of it onto the agar. It can take up to three or four days to see growth on the plate. I would give it up to a week and if you haven't noticed any mycelium growing on the agar, you might want to try doing the procedure again. And now I'll answer a common question, which is what's the point of cloning a mushroom? Cloning is basically making a copy of an existing mushroom. You clone mushrooms when you want to continue growing a culture from something you're fruiting. Some cultigens, like Enigma, don't make spores, so the only way to keep it going is by cloning it, growing it out on agar, and refruiting it. 
When you first start out from spores, usually there will be many different cultigens competing with each other for nutrients, and this usually results in uneven fruiting and flushes. Flushes where pens will all start and finish at different times and be different sizes or even totally different expressions. This is where cloning comes in and becomes very useful. You can select genetics to regrow by picking the best mushroom from your grow. How do you know what to pick? That's going to depend on what you're trying to do or what you want. If you want to go for canopies, you would select a mushroom from a cluster of mushrooms. If you want to have bigger mushrooms, you select the biggest mushroom. Whatever you select for, in theory, can regrow, with some exceptions. Some expressions can be caused by environmental conditions and or contamination and are likely not to transfer by cloning. The only way to be sure is to try cloning it and grow it out. When you clone a mushroom, you are essentially restarting a monoculture instead of many different cultures. If you cloned it correctly and there's no contamination, you will have basically one expression that for the most part should make even pen sets and fruiting a lot more even and the fruits should all be similar versus sporadic with multispore. In some cases, the culture you clone can revert. This is a bit of a gray area to me and I'm not an expert on the subject, but it will make the fruit so that it doesn't look anything like what you cloned. I'm not really sure what causes it or what happens, but I feel like people should be aware of it. Before I end the video, I'll show you the results of the cloning. This first one is the ones from the video that I just did. This is about a week after the initial cloning from the video. It appears to be nice and healthy growth. I'm going to let it grow out some more and then take some transfers from it. If you're certain that it's clean growth, you can spawn from the initial plate that you did the cloning on, but make sure that you don't put the old tissue in with whatever you spawn it to. Just take the old tissue sample out. I normally do one transfer when I clone something, once it's grown out, and then once I make the new transfer and let that plate grow out, that's the one I usually send back to grain. These next pictures are the clones from a squat and from the blob in the same tub. And they appear to be clean too, so it seems like it's successful. I won't know for sure until I get them back on grain and then refruit them. So I'll try and keep you guys updated and possibly make some videos about that. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any comments or questions, just leave them below.